Move little dog. Hi right, guys, it is a nasty, yuck, ugly, cold, depressing yeah, day here in the end times. And uh, is this is this paradise or not? Here in Mendocino coast of California on this cold winter mid-October day, but I cannot think of a better day than Wednesday, October 12th, Columbus Day, to bring you my uh, climate change meltdown roundup rant, where I just simply go on the pages of the mainstream media to see how we are heading directly into a burning lake of fire. You're all uh, your old climate refugee who was planning to head to the Pacific Northwest. I was planning <laughs> to go from here to go camping in the Redwoods and on the Oregon coast. Have you seen what's coming to the Pacific Northwest? If you live anywhere between San Francisco and I guess Vancouver, you better do as I'm getting ready to do and get your ass to the desert. I am heading the hell out of here, but before I go, let me bring you this rant, and uh, of course, I guess, you know, I have no room to complain about where I am. I guess I could be in, uh, in North Carolina today, where hundreds of are still stranded in North Carolina floods after Hurricane Matthew. I guess there's a thousand more than stranded down there in Haiti. And what's going on in Lumberton, North Carolina? Hundreds of people being rescued by boat and helicopter as floodwaters they continue to inundate North Carolina towns in the wake of Hurricane Matthew. Yep, 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 yep. And you would have thought, you, you just might would have thought, okay, that uh, with, a, with a hurricane smashing all around the southeast United States, you might have thought that somewhere in that dog and pony show debate uh, Sunday night that the words climate change would have been brought up at some point. Now, Hillary Clinton, technically, she did say the words climate change an hour and 28 minutes into an hour and a half debate. The words climate change did leave her lips. Uh, but you better believe that not one question has been directly asked of either candidate about what more and more national security analysts are calling the single biggest threat to this country and more and more climatologists calling the single biggest threat to the planet. Completely ignored, I have said since day one, my prediction is it will be the very last question of the very last debate, which is a reflection of where climate change rates on most clueless American voters. Uh, but anyway, for those of you who, who don't understand the difference between the frying pan and the fire, since uh, they're not going to talk about it anywhere in the debates. This uh, website called Vox.com, I, I like these guys, <coughs> and so they're explaining to you, says no one else is, <clears throat> on climate change, the difference between Trump and Clinton is really quite simple. Climate change... <clears throat> is one of the most critical issues facing humanity for, oh, the next 10,000 years or so. But you would never hear about it in the presidential debates. Moderators don't bother bringing it up. 
Yes. Um, so let's quickly hash out the difference between Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump on global warming because it is really quite simple. <clears throat> Hillary Clinton wants to use various regulatory levers at the president's disposal to nudge down U.S. greenhouse gas emissions bit by bit. In other words, what, what Hillary Clinton is, as Donald Trump explained correctly in the debate, Hillary Clinton will be another four to eight years of Barack Obama. So, if you think Barack Obama is saving the planet from climate change, then you will probably also be suffering the delusion that Hillary Clinton will do one goddamn thing uh, to, to save this planet from climate change. So, s sticking with, with Clinton, uh, let Vox pointing out to you, but if you compare this, meaning what Clinton can be expected to do, with the vast scale of what's needed to halt global warming, an 80% cut by 2050 that involves completely retooling our electricity, transport, industrial, and agricultural sectors, Clinton's proposals are laughably, tragically inadequate. There you go. Laughably, tragically inadequate. So Clinton is basically gambling that this will do for now. This is basically Obama's plan. It is far from a solution. It is easy to imagine it failing, but it is a plan, at least. And Trump's climate plan is even simpler. He doesn't have a climate plan, doesn't seem to care, never talks about the issue, saved for calling global warming a Chinese hoax, he has said that he will yank the United States out of the Paris climate deal. And since it's nine binding, he could do that. He would undo the, the tiny little bit of the CO2 regulations that Obama has put into place, such as the Clean Power Plan. And of course, he would make a major push to allow more oil and gas drilling on our public lands. It is very easy to imagine emissions rising under Trump and nearly impossible to imagine them falling. So that is the choice this election. Yep, uh, it may not be the world's most inspiring choice, but it is certainly a stark one. There you go. The, uh, the choice between Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump to do a goddamn thing about the single biggest threat to America's national security and the planet is a stark one between the frying pan and, and the fire. So, uh, how are four less than four weeks from uh, from this stark choice. How are Trump and Clinton supporters looking uh, at at climate change? What's the difference? N not between the candidates. Let's look in at the latest polls about the supporters of Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump. Climate change has received relatively scant attention throughout this presidential campaign, and the topic never came up during Sunday night's debate. Uh, I think we just went over, so they kind of recap what I just talked about. 
uh, getting from the candidates to their supporters, Democratic supporters of Clinton are far more likely than Trump's GOP backers to be concerned about the adverse effects of climate change to believe that climate change is largely the result of human activity and to insist that a broad range of policy and individual initiatives could make a difference in slowing the rate of, of growth of greenhouse gas emissions, the study found. Okay, so 56% of Clinton supporters say they, according to this latest poll, say they care a great deal about the issue of global climate change, while another 34% say they, are, they care somewhat about the issue. For a total of 90% of Clinton, support, Clinton supporters, by comparison, just 15% of Trump supporters say they care a great deal about global climate change, while 34% say they care some for a total of 49%. Uh -huh. But you notice that 34% of Trump and Clinton supporters care somewhat. It's that 56 versus 15% who give it a little bit more than caring a little bit. There you go. And what's more, Clinton and Trump supporters are deeply divided in beliefs about climate change, especially on the question of whether it is man-made. Yeah, 70% uh, of Clinton supporters blame climate change on human activity, while 17 percent of Trump supporters in this poll who, who even believe in climate change, 17 uh, percent blaming it on humans. This is a Pew Research poll. Anyway, moving on from the dog and pony show. What else do we have going on here? Let's look at some of these other studies here. How about wildfires getting worse due to climate change? No shit. Sherlock. Wildfires in California and across the West have become twice as destructive over the past three decades due to climate change taking a toll that will only continue to escalate, according to new research published on Monday. The study <clears throat> found that 10.4 million acres burned between 1984 and 2015 as a direct result of human-caused global warming. A total of 23 and a half million acres was scorched in western states during that time. <clears throat> now I don't know how these guys, so 23 and a half million acres <clears throat> burned and somehow according to this they're blaming 10.4 million acres of them directly on human caused global warming. How, how the hell did they make that distinction? While research has long tied wildfires to hotter, drier conditions resulting from greenhouse gas emissions, the newest report is one of the first to quantify the impact of climate change. Yes, and of course, good old California uh, at the forefront of this. Um, Anyway, we expect anthropogenic climate change and associated increases in fuel aridity to impose an increasingly dominant and detectable effect on western U.S. forest fire area 
in the coming decades while fuels remain abundant. Yes, like the 66 million dead trees right here in, uh, in California. Okay, looking at the southwest, a mega drought is coming to America's southwest. Unless carbon emissions plummet soon, the risk of a region-altering disaster in Arizona and New Mexico will exceed 99%. This is a new study published last week and Science Advances says that climate change will make a, a mega drought far more likely in the American Southwest. In fact, this kind of phenomenon could become a near certainty. Quoting this article, <clears throat> quote, this will be worse than anything seen during the last 2,000 years and would pose unprecedented challenges to water resources in the region, says Toby Alt, a professor of earth science at Cornell University. Quote, as we add greenhouse gases into the atmosphere and we have not put the brakes on stopping this, we are waiting the dice for mega drought conditions. Yes, we are weighting the dice for mega drought conditions. So that's in the southwest. So let's go up there to the northeast and looking specifically at New York City by the year 2100, try by the, didn't Guy McPherson say the year after next New York will be underwater, but according to the French news service, <clears throat> by the end of this century, storms will unleash more floods in New York. <coughs> Jesus. Okay, if I can get through this without choking to death. Extreme floods unleashed by massive storms on the scale of Hurricane Sandy in 2012 are expected to rise sharply over the coming decades in the New York City area. Um, according to this newest study, the worst case scenario has the frequency of these mega storms and flooding increasing 17 times by the year 2100. And in the best case minimum scenario, such storms will become three to four times <clears throat> more frequent, predicted the study by researchers at Princeton. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, <clears throat> do uh, a lot. It's a combination of, of increasing storm activity along with rising seas. Uh huh. The grand answer is that things are going to get worse. Do you think so? If nothing changes with hurricanes, so if they, even if even if hurricanes don't ramp up, sea level rise alone, with no help from hurricanes, will increase the frequency of sandy-like events. Yep, 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 yep. So mega droughts, mega floods. So. Uh, what are we going to do about this exactly? Uh, before I do that, uh, about what we're, two articles on what to do about it. I love this one from Cosmos Magazine asking the question, 
Why is Earth's axis shifting? Humanity has now burned enough fossil fuel to tip the planet slightly. We are only a little way into the 21st century, but signs of a warming planet are already evident around the globe. More frequent droughts in East Africa, stranded polar bears, and now, as of today, walruses in the Arctic, bleached coral reefs in the tropics, retreating glaciers in the high latitudes along the coast. Sea levels uh, are rising. And now we have this newest report that by burning huge quantities of fossil fuels, we humans have tipped the earth off its axis by a tiny amount. And what this is is from all the melting uh, of the glaciers. It's hard to imagine something as small as we humans being able to shift something as massive as our whole planet, but we use global warming as a force multiplier. So we dumped billions of tons of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, heating it along with the oceans, and the combination of hotter atmosphere and ocean water then melted so far over half a trillion tons of ice which flowed into the oceans and this redistribution of water has now shifted the north-south spin axis on the planet. <clears throat> so what exactly are we going to do about it? How about this hilarious story? Rapid transit is the key in fight against climate change. Yes, uh, anybody who thinks that we're saving the planet through rapid transit. Big cities worldwide have expanded faster than their rapid transit system, leading to higher levels of pollution, greenhouse gas emissions, and commuter misery, a report released Tuesday show, showed. Quote, low-density car-oriented development known as sprawl has been the predominant urban form for cities in the past century. The results of this have been disastrous for both people and the planet. And that's not James Howard Kunstler talking, this is Michael Marks, researcher at the nonprofit New York based Institute of Transportation and Development Policy. Uh, and they're, they're looking at uh, several things in here. This is a long involved story, but basically to boil it down, because I don't know where I am in the time, you know, what, what they're saying is that the farther this sprawl as these mega cities all over this planet mushroom and uh, and then going hand in hand with that as as more and more people are able to afford more and more gas sucking vehicles uh, and, and the the mass transit is is a joke that with each passing year, this planet gets farther and farther and farther away from providing mass transit. It, it, it's a joke. Uh, anyway, I think we get the point, but I, I am going to, uh, anyone who says you're old, Doomsday Prophet never has any good news. We're going to wind up with this, uh, with this story. Hallelujah. Climate activists shut down five tar sands oil pipelines. All right. Wielding 
little more than wire cutters, wrenches, and a willingness to be arrested, a group of climate activists shut down five oil pipelines across the United States on Tuesday. There you go. Uh, the activists cut down wire fences and manually turned emergency shutdown valves on pipelines in Minnesota, Montana, North Dakota, and Washington. The targeted pipelines carry a particular type of heavy, heavy high carbon crude oil from Canada's tar sands region in Alberta. Uh, these activists saying they turned the pipeline's emergency valves to warn of the climate change emergency that threatens to bring rising sea levels, more extreme and frequent storms, and other effects. Quoting one of these uh, protesters before she was hauled off to jail, we have to take escalated action to match this escalated catastrophe. Yep, escalated action to match this escalated catastrophe. Good luck with that as uh, the only escalated actions that are being taken on this planet are to escalate the catastrophe. Uh, smoke them if you got them, guys. It, it, it's over. It's over. And with that, I'm going to wrap up this uh, this climate change meltdown roundup rant. I'm going to help my friends here sock in their firewood for the year. We're heading up into the hills to uh, to chop firewood all day as the first winter mega storm gets ready to slam into the Pacific Northwest. I think starting tomorrow night which is the reason your old homeless climate refugee and his little dog will be heading south on Highway 1. Points unknown. I think we're going to head, uh, maybe we're going to head to Arizona and New Mexico. So, uh, look out, look out Arizona and New Mexico. Ambone and Sancho Panza are on the way because I'm getting the hell out of this stuff and I better say bye guys yes little dog it's a way to get stepped on